Peace, peace. Peace, 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 love, light of healing, peace, love, light of healing, peace to the gods, peace to the earth, y'all. Climb on in. Climb on in, family. Y'all be thinking I'm burning some weed or smoking some weed, y'all. This is per diarco. This is a bark. <laughs> I'm not up here smoking a joint. <laughs> y'all climb on in. Y'all can see I'm here studying. Whenever I get my study on, I like to go live and show y'all what we studying and what we talking about. Climb on in, family. Climb on in. We talking about protein. Protein and this daily connection to, for real, every so-called disease you can think of, man. The body be trying its hardest to get these proteins out of the body, y'all. And uh, just really going through the research, going through the articles, you know, looking at uh, live blood analysis. We're going to do that next, show y'all live blood analysis from the microscope. But, uh, man, <laughs> protein is killing us. I've been telling y'all this for the past, what, 12 years, that protein is very, very bad for human consumption. Uh, people get it misconstrued because when they think I say protein, I'm talking about amino acid structures, and I'm not talking about amino acid structures. Amino acid structures is a bunch of groups of aminos, amino acids that's put together, and these is what build your tissues, these build your muscle cells, these build uh, uh, bones, they build everything. Like, if you look at your body, your body is made of cells. These cells are made of amino acid structures or amino acid groups, and then the signal and electricity is what gives these things life, y'all. Uh, but the protein that I'm talking about that's killing, you know, the bodybuilders, the protein that I'm talking about uh, that's killing people that is, that is consuming a lot of meat, this is actually animal-based protein. So there's different proteins, y'all. You have plant protein or what you would call plant amino acid structures. You have fruit protein or what you would call a fruit amino acid structure or basically the seedling of the plant, which is nothing but the productive side of the plant, which is the fruit. Then you have animals or other terrestrial beings that go and eat these fruits and eat these plants and then they get the amino acid structures from them and then when they go through the metabolic process of eating these amino acid structures they actually turn these amino acid structures into protein then you go and eat the animal and you get that amino acid structure that's already been metabolically used and you call it protein and that's what's killing you now i talk about this all the time when you actually think of the word protein it comes from the word it, it, it actually means amino amino acid structures. When you break down the word amino acids at the end is acids. So proteins is naturally very, very acidic and they're full of nitrogen or what you will call nitrates. And that's the reason why if you plant based and you want to receive a lot of protein, you see a lot of people eat beans. And the reason why they eat beans is because beans are the embryo and the seedlings of plants. And since it's in that growing stage and they need to actually spring forth or, or you get a sprout from it, what it has is a high con concentration of nitrogen nitrogen in it. And nitrogen is very, very bad for the kidneys. That's why you see a lot of bodybuilders. They have a lot of kidney diseases that come to us. A lot of bodybuilders end up having cardiac arrest or heart attacks that's coming from us. Because when you look at protein, protein is not only your most your most acidic food that you can consume, but it's also very, very uh, blood coagulant, meaning it will coagulate the blood. It coagulates the blood, and I'm going to show you all the process on how it does that. A uh, Protein is linked to every disease you're talking about, and I'm not just saying, even though I've been saying this for over a decade, there are scientific articles showing y'all that meat consumption is killing y'all. Then we're going to get into, well, you know, what about the carnivore diet? Uh, when I'm speaking of this, I'm mainly speaking towards my people, and I'm not being racist or being prejudiced, but we are biologically different. So, you know, you have some other species of people that can tolerate the protein, excessive protein uh, overload more than certain people. Uh, my people that's of melanin descent, uh, our amino acid structures are different. Uh, our biology is completely different. Of course, our carbon melanin content is different. Uh, our teeth structures are different. And this is scientific stuff. I, had, I did an actual lecture talking about the biological differences between Caucasians, Asians, and so called melanated beings, so called black people. And these are all scientific articles and studies showing y'all that we are more we are more bone mineral dense than other people. We hold more electrolytes and minerals and salts than other people. Our digestive process, the hydrochloric acid in our stomachs are weaker than other people's. When you start really getting into the things that we have going on, it shows you naturally we are frugivores. Whether we want to argue it or not, whether you're talking about our intestines being uh, much shorter 
than a carnivore, whether you're talking about the hydrochloric acid being actually 10 times weaker than the hydrochloric acid that's inside of a carnivore. Uh, you talk about how we're upright, you know, uh, we're not these, we're not horizontal, we're vertical, meaning that we can't get up to 70 miles an hour of speed to track down our prey. Uh, we don't have claws to actually rip and tear the flesh from the bone. We don't have long canines to rip and tear the flesh from the bones. You know, we don't have tails and senses. We, if you look at a Cornivore. Cornivore is a predator species by the way that they're shaped, their physiology, their anatomy. But when you look at an actual human being, especially specifically a melanated human being, we don't we're nurturers. Biologically, we're nurturers. And when you actually look at us on a physiological uh, a physio, uh, a physiology level, we are nurturers. That's just what we are. And in order for us to become predators, we have to do unnatural things. We have to make weapons like uh, we have to make weapons that resemble claws like a knife. You have to make guns to shoot our prey because we are scared to run up on them. So you really you're not going to run up on the preys. Most of the preys that you kill, like the bison, a bison will run your ass over and trot you to the ground and you will be dead. You see what I'm saying? So all the things that you do to even hunt these animals or to hunt this meat that you call protein to eat, you got to do a bunch of unnatural things to even get this meat. And it shows you right here that if you're not born with these mechanisms, if you're not born with this stuff to make and you don't have to compromise your back, you don't have to compromise your muscles, you don't have to compromise your bone structures to get the nutrients, then it's not really, it wasn't made for you. Now you can say you evolved to do these things, but I'm talking about simply posture, structure, and, and getting things with ease. If you have to do anything that goes against friction or anything that goes against your weight to get it, usually naturally, I'm not saying naturally you wasn't created to do it. And eating meat is one of them. I ain't seen nobody got out there in the wild and literally chased down their own food and got it and killed it with their bare hands. And then they, then you're going to take it to a kitchen anyway. You're going to take it to a kitchen you're going to put it in some grease and you see nothing in nature doing that. You don't see anything in nature doing that. But guess what you can do? You are upright, vertical human being. You can walk up to a tree. And guess what you can do? You can pick your apple from the tree. You can pick your orange from the tree. This don't take any work to do that. Then you actually have the fingers to actually peel the oranges or to hold the apple right. A carnivore don't have those type of fingers like you. You see what I'm saying? And you can eat that actual food. You can't do that. With meat, you have to do something that's unnatural to attain the meat. And these are just simple facts. So th when, when you get into your physiology and when you get into the anatomy, you are a frugivore. And sometimes you are herbivore, but you're really not an herbivore either because when you look at the digestive enzymes that your body create, it can't even break through the cellulose of the actual vegetables. You are a frugivore. You only eat herbs when you need healing. Now, have we evolved into eating more herbs? Have we evolved into, you know, eating more meat and it's not killing us uh, 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 very, very fast? I mean, of course, you, that's an argument that you can say. But when I'm talking about living healthy, you know, living very, very healthy, being at homeostasis with your body and with the earth and with nature, you are a frugivore. You're not an omnivore. You're not a herbivore. You're not a carnivore. And the reason why I'm saying you're not a herbivore, the plants don't even want you eating them in the first place. We talk about this all the time about how the plants create anti-nutrients or they create some type of combativeness within them. They own herbicides, they own pesticides, and they own humicides, whether you want to talk about it or not. I know I made up the word humicides, but we are humans and they create chemical compounds that fight against us. Uh, uh, gliadin is one of them. You know, gluten is uh, another one. When you start looking at all the things, uh, saponins, tannins, all of these things, as uh, the sulfuric acid, all these things inside the plants is made to make you have an upset stomach or to give you some type of allergen or marker to give you some type of expectorant symptomology for you won't touch it again. Because the plants want to live, because the plants want to live to reproduce and give you fruit to eat. So even the plant kingdom don't want to be eaten. They actually bear something called seeds and this seed bear a flesh around it called a fruit. And that's what the plant wants you to eat from that plant, the fruit. It don't want you to eat its leaves. But of course... We can. And of course, a lot of people get severe reactions from them. Of course, you know, you, you, you can get strong off these things because they do have protective agents inside of them, just like your skin got protective agents inside of it. But you don't you're not running around biting into other human beings, are you? And the skin is the first line of defense when it comes to the external environment. So it's going to have everything in it to uh, protect itself from the environment. The same thing with the cellulose, the same thing uh, uh, when it comes to all the, the different mechanisms that create these plant materials. 
We just looking at stuff wrong. So look, look I want to get into it though. If y'all got if y'all got some pins and pads, type in some nines. I got a whole thing right here proving and just showing you how protein consumption actually causes heart disease. It causes heart failure. It causes kidney disease, kidney failure, stroke, dementia, Alzheimer's disease, uh, multiple sclerosis, diabetes, hypo and hypertension. And these are facts. We can look this up and I can show you the whole mechanism on why meat eating is super, super bad for our people. Me, I'm going to go on record to say I think it's bad for everybody, even Caucasians. We just see that they're, they're dying lesser from meat consumption than so-called black people but it catches up with them too and it catches up with them all the time all right so if y'all ready to get into it type in some nines make sure y'all got y'all pens and y'all pads and i'm gonna show y'all how i study so this is how i study i always i start off by asking myself questions so the first question i ask myself is what is a heart attack all right that's the that's the first thing i said uh somebody says so no fish no no fish either if it got eyes on it and if it bleeds you shouldn't be putting it in your mouth that's, that's what my studies have been showing me. My clinical trials have been showing me. Me dealing with thousands and thousands of clients have been showing me. Me reading and looking at real blood work, live blood analysis. You know what I'm saying? It's showing me that protein is bad. And protein is super, super bad when it's built up in the bloodstreams. I'm not talking about amino acids. And I'm not talking about amino acid structures. I am talking about very, very complex amino acid structures that come from animals and animal byproducts like dairy and stuff like that. So let me say that again before we get started. I'm not talking about amino acids or I'm not talking about amino acid structures that they call protein. I'm not talking about that. I am talking about complex amino acid structures that come from animals and animal byproducts. That is meat, that is dairy, that's cheese, that's ice cream, that's all these byproducts that come from an animal. Anything that comes from an animal that you consume will kill you unless you're wearing skin or something like that, like a, a coat, a mink coat and things like that. And I don't even suggest you kill them to get that after they die take their skin and put it on you know what i'm saying never be aggressive with the animal kingdom because we need them and guess what we need the animal kingdom for they cultivate the land they poop in their urine, cultivate the land. Without these animals, we don't even get the fruits and vegetables we need to sustain our bodies and our molecular structures. They have a point and purpose here. We just using them for the wrong point and purpose. Animals are not meant for food. Sea creatures are not meant to be eaten. They're not. And that's just by humans. And that's just flat out the, the truth, y'all. So I started this off by asking this question. And when we done, I'm going to make sure that uh I get on here. Y'all can call in and I, act, I answer whatever y'all need. So check this out. It says, what is a heart attack? Because this is what I want to prove today that basically... Heart attack literally come from meat consumption. Of course, you can be scared into a heart attack. Of course, your hypertension can bring you into a heart attack and stroke. Of course, all these different metabolic so-called diseases can bring on a heart attack. But guess what's causing all these metabolic so-called diseases? It's heavy, heavy animal meat consumption, y'all, whether y'all want to admit it or not. And look, the data do not lie. The data don't not lie. So it says what causes a heart attack? So a heart attack is the clogging and the blocking of an artery wall. For people that don't know what arteries is, these are arteries, all right? These are arteries. So, and a heart goes right up in here, and it actually cages the heart, right? So, when a heart get clogs up or the artery get clogged up or what you would call capillaries or capillaries get clogged up or the vein, the venous system get clogged up, it stops blood either from flowing to the heart or from leaving the heart. And when this blockage happens, what happens is nutrients and oxygen cannot make it to an organ anymore. The moment that nutrients and oxygen can't make it to an organ, you have something called cardiomyocytes. Cardiomyocytes is what you would call heart cells, just like you have something called uh, 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 knee Hemocytes. And this is where you get the word pneumonia from. This is all this is talking about is lung cells. See that you got 150 trillion cells that makes up the full molecular structure of your body, but each cell does something different. For instance, uh, when you see a, a cardiomyocyte die, it's very, very hard to really recycle itself. If you see it die from some violent actors, you're attacking it. So you will see that they'll say once heart cells die, it's kind of hard to replace them or it's kind of hard for them to regenerate. Studies showing that this is a lie, but the reason why they thought that in the first place because it's very very hard to regenerate an actual uh cardiomyocytes same thing when it comes to your actual brain cells 
Whether we're talking about uh, melanin neurotransmitters, dendrites, neurological cells, these are very, very hard to regenerate. That's why they say, they used to say, once you kill a brain cell, it can't be rebirthed or it can't be recycled, which it can. It just happens in a very, very slow process. But there is a fasting process that I'm going to give you at the end of this video to show you how to actually regenerate these things. And it's called autophagy through intermittent fasting. And it shows that's the, that's the fastest way to, re to regenerate heart cells and brain cells. And for those that don't know at the age of 21, I actually suffered from cardiac, uh, from a heart attack, or well, should I say I attacked my heart. So I'm not just st sitting here uh, speaking from here stints or Googling and research. I'm speaking from a person that had scar tissue on his heart that they said, I can never get that scar tissue off. I can never regenerate it, but I regenerated my scar tissue uh, through herbs into a juicing regimen and, and stopping eating all the meat and flesh. I watched my whole entire body regenerate and re rehabilitate itself, y'all. So it, it can most definitely happen. So when you look at what a heart attack is, a heart attack is basically when the arteries that's leading to the heart and the vessels or what you call veins that's descending from the heart or leaving from the heart get clogged up. Now, the next question you have to ask yourself, which is what I asked myself on the paper. And the reason why I'm showing you this, because this is how I study. The next one was, well, what are what are clogged arteries? So a clogged artery is an obstruction inside the artery wall that is keeping blood from flowing properly, y'all. That's keeping blood from flowing properly, whether it's calcium that's built up between the artery wall, whether it's cholesterol that's built up in the artery wall. And then again, you have to sit back and ask yourself, why is calcium built up in my bloodstream? The only time calcium is built up in this bloodstream is when calcium need to come and neutralize the acid. See that? So everything we're talking about is a body self healing mechanism. Whenever you see calcium in the bloodstream, it's coming to heal something. Whenever you see cholesterol in the bloodstream, if it's not making sexual chemistry and sexual hormones uh, like pregnenolone, progesterone, and all these other testosterone, all these things are made from cholesterol. Guess what cholesterol is? Cholesterol is your internal scab. Whenever you rip an artery or you tear an artery from something that's inside of the blood vessels that's obstructing the blood vessels and you get a tear in the artery wall, instead of you having hemorrhaging or internal bleeding, cholesterol will come and patch up that area. Then after cholesterol come and patch up that area, calcium come neutralize the acids around the area because inflammation had to set in place to isolate the area to heal it. So you got cholesterol, then you got cholesterol with acids on it. Then you have calcium going into the bloodstream to actually scab over that actual artery or that rip and tear, whether it be to internal tissues, whether it be to an internal organ, whether it be to a structure inside the, uh, the, the venous system or even on the outside. So when you fall down and you scrape your arm and you get a scab on there, the same thing happened internally when something to struck the walls or the tissues that's inside of your body. They scab over too. What scab them over is cholesterol. So people will say cholesterol is bad. No, cholesterol is not bad. And, and, and you having high cholesterol is not a bad thing. It's saving your life. If you didn't have the rips and tears in the, on your internal organs or eternal organs, should I say, if you didn't have the rips and tears in the venous system, then the cholesterol wouldn't be there clogging up them places anyway. See, we are constantly looking at things going on in our body and we're acting like our body is attacking itself or we acting like things are wrong with our body. But our body is just so intelligent that we end up killing it, thinking we know better than our body when we don't. There's really no such thing as bad cholesterol. You can't have melanin neurotransmitters without cholesterol. Cholesterol is what surrounds the cells and protects the cells. It's called the cellular membrane that's made of cholesterol. You have liquid crystals that flow throughout the bloodstream and flow in and out of the cells, actually helping you exchange things through the interstitial fluid. That's cholesterol. You can't fire off. You cannot fire off a, a, melanin, a, a, a melanin transmitter without cholesterol. Your neurons. Guess what carries the neurons throughout the brain and throughout the body? Cholesterol. Guess what helped patch up internal bleeding? Cholesterol. See that the whole thing is just like mucus. Everybody think mucus is is the uh, the culprit. They think mucus is the bad guy. It's not. Without mucus or without your mucus membrane, it would be impossible for you to live. You would die of all types of outward invaders coming in and just hijacking your body because what the mucosa membrane does is it 
it lines the inside but outside of your body. And the reason why I'm calling it the inside but outside is from your mouth to your anus, it's inside of the body, but it says not inside of the cells. See that? This is a hollow tube. And what keeps things from getting inside of the bloodstream and keep things from getting inside of our connective tissues is this thick mucus layer that starts in your mouth, goes down your esophagus, all throughout your digestive system and end up at your anus. So even though your digestive system or this tube is on the inside of your body, it's really on the outside of your body. Because the only way into the body is by way of the bloodstream through blood capillaries. So even mucus, when you're talking about mucus, mucus is a defense. Mucus don't cause disease. Now, excessive mucus buildup because mucus puts out fire. Again, mucus and calcium, it literally neutralizes acids. And then these things get engulfed by the mucus. Then mucus moves it into something called the interstitial fluid. Once it goes into the interstitial fluid of the body, it goes to something called the, uh, the lymph capillary vessels. Then it goes inside the lymph nodes and it gets broken down or degraded. And then it goes to the kidneys and then you urinate it out. You see that? Now, what happens is if you're constantly eating meat, if you're constantly eating protein and all these acids, mucus starts excessively building up because it feel like it constantly got to put out fires. So mucus on top of mucus and then calcium coming in and then acids, it solidifies. This solidification spreads on top of the cells and then it sucks the cells of its oxygen and then it smothers the cells so the cells can't breathe or it can't do the exchange through the yeah. Through the uh, through the pneumocytes and it can't exchange oxygen for carbon dioxide and then the cells suffocate and it dies. You see that? So this stops the proliferation of cells. So what is the problem? The problem wasn't the mucus. The problem was eating the acidic forming foods that bring that brought mucus in the body to become a defense. The problem isn't the calcium. The problem is the things that you're eating that's obstructing the artery walls that's going to bring calcium, calcium to that artery to scab over to heal that part of the body. The problem isn't the parasite. The problem is the things you feed in your body that pleomorph these microorganisms into parasites because they have to get bigger to eat all the degraded waste and the metabolic waste that's in the body. So you will blame the parasite. You will blame the mucus. You will blame the cholesterol. You will blame the calcium. But these are not the cause to your disease. These are not the causes to your illness, to your illnesses. These are the effects. So we need to get past the effects. And we need to go to the actual root cause. And it's what you putting in your mouth and it's this polluted, toxic environment and what you're bringing into your internal environment, y'all. So when you start looking, one of them is meat consumption. And look, everybody be like, well, my grandma lived 130 years and she ate meat. But did she live 130 years in her health? Or was she on a deathbed? Was she blind? Did she have did she have hypertension? Did, what, did she have diabetes mellitus? Did she need to get her foot cut off? Was she on bed? rest the whole the whole 20 years before she died we talking about the actual quality of life not the quantity of life and then the people be like well we used to be hunters and gatherers if you look back and you read the literature they was dying of these same diseases today we acting like these are new diseases they even found cancer back then and then if you see what they was eating back then in ancient Kemet and ancient Eva ancient Egypt guess what they was eating they was eating wheat they was eating barley they was drinking bear and it was eating all of those meats. So I'm finna show y'all whether the meat was treated, cured, whether the meat had uh, uh, had antibiotics, whether the meat was steroid free, whether it was grass fed and organic. That don't mean nothing. It goes against our molecular structures, meaning it will go against our body because it's full of used, already used proteins because most of the meat you eat, eat the things you're supposed to be eating. And what I mean by that, most of your meat, when it's alive, it eats simple amino acid structures from plant material. You do not eat meat that eat other meat. Now, some of y'all do, but I'm going to say 98% of so-called African-Americans don't even eat meat that eat other meat. You eat meat that eats the things that you're supposed to be eating, that your biological molecular structure was designed by the creator to eat in the first place. You created your own middleman. You've been indoctrinated and you're dying because of it. That's exactly what's happening. So heart disease, it comes from meat consumption. I'm going to show y'all this through the literature. Diabetes, it comes from meat consumption. Do you realize when you eat meat, meat comes with lipids? Yes, phospholip uh, 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 polypeptides, phosphate lipids. And then these lipids are very, very oily. Guess what these lipids does when they enter into the bloodstream? 
it got nutrients in it. It gets delivered to the cells of the body. It can't make it into the cells. So guess what it does? It teams up with cholesterol and help form this little glossy seal. I call it a sealant because it's basically what it is around the cells. So now glucose need to make it into the cells, but glucose can't make it into the cell because glucose is sitting in the bloodstream waiting to be delivered into the cells. But you got this thick ass solid or what you were going to call polypeptide lipids that's around the actual cell that can't penetrate the cells, insulin get alerted by the actual beta cells of the pancreas and the islands of Langerhans. It acts as a key. It's trying to unlock the door to let you to let glucose in. And guess what? It can't do it because it have the wrong key. No, the key ain't wrong. The key ain't wrong. It's the protective part that's around the door that's wrong. And that's what's happening with meat consumption. So meat consumption actually causes diabetes and it causes heart disease. Excessive proteins cannot be broken down by our body. It is something called, uh, it's called high homocysteine. High homocysteine is happened when you eat a bunch of meat. And this homocysteine is actually breaking down from methylthionine. And when you see the methyl, uh, methylene getting broken down to these components, it breaks down into homocysteine. Homocysteine causes all these problems. And I'm going to show you and take you through the steps of what happened and how this stuff gets stored up. First, it gets stored up into the blood. The blood say, hold on. If I change my pH, because remember, these are kind. Look, these are very, very, very complex amino acid structures. It's too much pH for the blood. It's changing the pH. Too much hydrogen and nitrogen in them. The blood, if it changes from 7.45 to 7.43, I believe, you would die of alkalosis or acidosis. So the blood will put it into the interstitial fluid. Then this starts messing up lymph flow. So the lymph flow will be like, oh, hell no. So guess what the lymph flow will do? The lymph will push it into the connective tissues. Now you got all of this, all this proliferated, yes, acidic protein in the connective tissue causing you gout, causing you all type. Because remember, calcium coming. Calcium causes gout. Only reason why gout is in the tissue and between the bones is because it's trying to actually neutralize all the proteins that's between the connective tissues. Now, what happens is this don't work. So the body do a last attempt to heal itself. Guess what it does? It turns this actual homocysteine into full 100% protein or what you will call collagen. And then what it does with collagen, it forces it back into the artery walls for the body can get rid of it. But collagen goes deep behind the, the basal membrane of the arteries and digs itself into the cells. Just like this. This is an artery. This is collagen. Basal, when, whenever you get into the healing space, basal means basement. This is the basement or the basal part of the actual artery wall. This is nothing but pure protein. Now, look. You see how it's pinching the artery because it's building up and building up because you have too many excessive proteins. So now you stop blood circulation. This is called obstruction. So imagine it's going to the heart and then you got all these proteins that have built itself up in the basal uh, uh, area of the actual arteries and you can't receive no more blood flow to the heart or vital nutrients to proliferate the cells. That's what you call the heart, a heart attack. What happened if it's in the ganglia area of the body or what you'll call the cervical area of the body and it stops all blood and uh, circulation and oxygen circulation and nutrients from going to the brain. You call that a stroke. So if you go, really going to take it for what it is, heart attack and stroke is caused by what y'all eating meat, meat consumption. And that's what it is. But let me show y'all, just in case you think I'm lying. Let me take this off and show y'all what I'm talking about. We're going to go to the first one. Hold on. Because I like to prove all things. All right, so here go an article. And there's plenty of these, y'all. There's plenty of these. It says, cure meat, vegetables, and bean foods in, relate, in, in relations to childhood acute Leukemia risk population based control study. And it just shows you how cured meat. We're going to go through cured meat, natural meat, all of that. And it's just showing you how children is actually getting all these different types of diseases from everything but fruit. We <laughs> everything but fruit. I want you all to read that. And it's basically talking about the consumption of cured smoked meat and fish leads to the formation of carcinogenic or nitrogen compounds in the, in the acidic stomach. And you read through this. It shows you the method, the results and everything. I'm not making this stuff up. So that's one of them. You can look it up. And this is uh, the number to check it out is uh, PMC two, six, five, three. Uh, five, four, zero. Look it up. All the cite, uh, citations and everything in there. Here go another one. This is talking about, and check this one out. 
This is a very good one. I love I love this read. And it says in order for human stomachs to break down meat, it must have high. It must be high in hydrochloric acid, which we're not. It said the stomach of humans and herbivores produce less than one twentieth of the acids produced by carnivores. And a lot of people is wondering why they got too much acid production inside of their stomach. And, and, and if you look at it, so you have a bunch of different processes that happen in the body. When you actually eat fruit, you have an alkaline enzyme called emulase or emulose. This is what actually breaks down your fruit or fructose. Then when you eat vegetables, you have something called trypsin. This actually breaks down your glucose. Well, when you need to start, these break down your carbohydrates and carbohydrates. We're just talking about carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. All right. Now, when you start eating proteins or what you would call plant protein, you have something called, it's, it's called pepsin. Pepsin creates pepsinogen. This creates a hydrochloric acid to go higher. This breaks down plant protein, showing you that your body is made for plant protein. You don't have an enzyme.